So there was a, a new preview of Houdini 20.5. That was put out uh, this past week. Um, they're actually doing the um, uh, big keynote presentation in Paris tomorrow, June 18th. Uh, so if you're around, you know, watch it. It's going to be really, really awesome. Um, some really cool upgrades like Gosh. material point method solvers for particles and stuff. Like These you do. particle stuff. Dave, I don't know if you can like actually go back to the beginning of this video. Uh, like if you reload it, it, will it... It'll, it'll start over. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, some of the stuff that they're showing off with, like, snow and mud and the mixture of, like, sand and mud together. Yes. Oh, it was so, so cool. Like, I think the stuff uh, that... Who, it, the side effects crew, I think, are just fantastic. They're doing amazing work. I wish I could... I had the brain that worked with Houdini. You know, it does a little bit, but not a lot, you know? But uh, they've mm -hmm. also got uh, procedural crowd generation for karma and hydra delegates. Like this type of stuff is so rad. Um, the uh, ice they've cream. got a new art. Ar yeah, right. Uh, that I mean, you could do that in Houdini now, you know. But like, uh, then you've got like the Just RBD God, car rig so with path animations. So like, they've actually got a car rig that will adjust like you know uh, how much stuff is happening. Like, like you know, and all that. Yeah, the suspension and stuff like that. You know, this uh, right here is the material point uh, method solver for particles. So it's like, I guess it's using a material uh, in order to solve where the particles are or not. Oh, That's that super mud. cool. That freaking right, mud. that mud. Yeah, Just I wait, saw that the mix these it's, two it's mixtures so together, crazy. I think, are incredible. Like that is cool stuff right there. This is the kind um, of thing though that, like, if you are gonna get into it you're really yeah. gonna get it like it, it is a yep. full-time thing like i i just don't see i mean maybe there are some geniuses out there but i don't see that many generalists that would be able to do all of this stuff right i agree i agree i could do i could do almost everything except for those the 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 particle like mix stuff like some of this stuff i could do you know anyway um Let's see. That's the RBD car rig with path animations, which is pretty cool. So you can like create a path and you know make the car go along that, which is cool. Um, in 2020, they actually introduced new sculpting tools uh, for uh, Houdini, which I thought was awesome. And they just added a new like a wrinkle deformer node, which is cool. So like you can create real time wrinkles and stuff like that on your uh, 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 your stuff. Uh, then, uh, oh, another big one. So I, I, the more I, I watched it, the more I noticed it seemed really heavily into like material creation and stuff like that. So like they've got mm. live material painting and, uh, non-destructive texture design, like the layout of it looks exactly like substance designer, you know? So it's right. like you right. can work in a very substance designer linear node fashion where you've got like the little squares and the previews and stuff like that in order to create these new uh, textures. They've also got a quick texture now where it's like you just throw down a quick texture and it's got all of your assets right there where you don't need to pipe in a whole bunch of nodes and stuff like that. You know, something basic like you want to make some gold and you don't actually have any assets that go with it. You know what I'm saying? Which is pretty cool. Um, they've also, they've also added, uh, non photorealistic and tune shading of mm. geometry and volumes, which is pretty cool. Uh, up here a little ways, uh, in the video, they show off like this actual fire, uh, from like a, a, bun a, a burner, like a stove burner or something. And they created like this tune shader effect and it looks freaking awesome. Like, it's really cool to be able to like to work natively because they've got their karma XPU or whatever, instead of having to work in like redshift, like redshift <sighs> just introduced their bird, man. That, that... And, and that is, that is something that I, I really appreciate about Houdini and mm -hmm. that, and they're like, uh, the way they show off like their work, you know, versus some of the other, uh, DCC where it's like, Oh, here's a new feature. And they just show like a, crappy you know or they just like, show the tool oh, and no sneak peek like, exactly they, exactly they get these like, artists that the are tool, fantastic but it's like it's like 
this isn't like a use case in which you would do it or something. This is just what the tool does, you know? But they get artists and like, to show these things off in the preview who, yes, ahead exactly. of time. And it's so, yes. like, it gets you so much more excited about yes. that tool, right? Rather than just, 100%. oh, this is just a test on a background. Yep. Like, show something really impressive so that people yeah. really get excited about it. That's what yeah. sells. Yeah, <laughs> you know, hundred percent, and and, yep. and then and then for them to do that on top of everything else, they come out with like friggin' ten tools that are amazing at the same time. So yep. it's like ten x. Yep. It's like shut up and take my money, right? right? But then on the other end of that, it's like yeah, shut up and take my money, and then I'll give you the money, and then I'll never have time to learn all of this stuff, right? You know, right. to to be eighteen years old with nothing to do, you know. Oh, I wish, if only. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> uh, one last thing that I've got on the list is uh, Onyx reference node. Um, I've never used Onyx AI or anything like that, but they've got a reference node for like image based machine learning, like style transfers. So you can take like a video or like an image or something and then transfer a specific t style to it, you know, uh, for your materials or something like that, which I think is awesome. Like, I'm really excited about that type of stuff. I think that will um uh, that will add a whole lot of uh, coolness to it. Yeah. So tomorrow, so, the 18th, we'll see. I'm sure 18th, they'll show yeah. even more stuff tomorrow. They're probably holding off on some of They probably haven't even shown the best stuff yet. Yeah. You know, I so. think, you know, because I think they're trying to get a lot of people over to the, uh, what is it, the Karma XPU type stuff. You know, and a lot of people I know are are using it instead mm. of like using a third party render engine like, mm. you know, Redshift or whatever, um, uh, because it's it's pretty you're, freaking you're, developed and it using looks that just really good for vi for just development or they're using it for final product, using it for final product. Yeah. Hmm. Like, you know, I know I, I, I want to say. I don't know. I was talking to Houdini Mark a, a while ago about it. And he's like, yeah, it's it's really, really good. You know, like uh, and then I've heard, you know, some people say that Redshift used to be like the the thing, you know, for Houdini. Like it was the most stable and it has since not become well, so. it seems like they really want to have their own engine. I mean, I know they allow yes. Octane and everything else, but they're really striving for their own. I don't know. That's what it seems like yeah. anyway. Um, it just depends on what your end goal is and what you're doing with it. You know? Yeah. I mean, most people I know who do Houdini stuff, it seems like they take that into cinema or something else. You yep. know, so it doesn't matter anyway. So they're going back to their native engine, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. I I know uh, uh, Mark was saying uh, the last time we spoke uh, that, you know, he was fine. He was trying less and less to actually bring it back into cinema and right. do everything in Houdini right. because like, yeah, and I have this issue when I'm working in Unreal as well. It's like you're exporting huge Olympic files. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you have to export ex Olympic files over and then bring them right. back, you know. Yeah more stuff and it just becomes it becomes cumbersome and if you're working in a small space like you and i are mm -hmm. and you're limited to how much hard drive space you have you don't have these huge you know uh nas servers or server farms or whatever it's like you know i need as much space yeah. as i possibly can the caches and the olympics are what gets you big yeah time. You know, and if you don't have Dropbox or something, you can dump them on. That's that's the only yeah. saving grace for me whenever I have a big cache file or something. It's like, here's a 150 gig cache file. It's like, well, I really don't want to delete it. I'm done with the project, but I don't want to delete it. But yeah. like, what do I do with it? And so yeah. I just right click and say save offline just in case, you know, yeah. in, in Dropbox or something like that. 